testing, anti-testing. And according to this, we are now live. Okay, hello again everyone, welcome to the stream. Uh, you know what, I've got so much energy, I don't know why, probably uh, some sort of, uh, probably dying of something, I don't know. Uh, hopefully, maybe not, I don't know, okay. Um, what I'm going to do now is if we actually look at the, the, um, the two-dimensional version of this that says whether or not uh, this sphere, this conal sphere, uh, this conal, this umbral cone will intersect any part of this uh, third planet given that we know the width of the umbral cone and uh, the position of the planet and therefore the angle of the planet from the conal, uh, the conal, the umbral cone f point. Boy, that didn't make any sense. The umbral cone focus point. So to do that, I think we're going to actually call this um, BC Eclipse Portions dot uh, and I do want to create a separate file for this, and um, so um, and of course this is going to come up and do nothing unless I've done this. Wow, Eclipse Portions dot did, did I not? S oh, I need, probably need to do like a one byte save real quick. Gorgeous. Nothing's happening, of course. Okay, so we're going to go ahead, and this, um, I found that this has actually some fairly good um, two-dimensional drawing features. So this is uh, hopefully going to be, uh, kind. this is going to be, go better than our attempt to draw three-dimensional figures earlier. Uh, but then again, it might not. We don't know. All right, so I'm going to start off with uh, graphics. Just want to start off with. We're going to start off with drawing the um, umbral cone as a uh, as two lines, which is what it would be. So this would be line zero zero going to one one, and this is of course not how we're going to obviously fix this up a little bit, and then going from to one minus one, which should give us two uh, nice looking line, not one minus eleven, which should give us some two nice looking lines. Uh, that are 45 degree angle. Beautiful. We actually do want, of course, to show the axes um, because we're going to be putting in some other stuff there. Gorgeous. Okay, and this uh, this umbral cone is too wide. We're going to go ahead and slick it down to um, 30 degrees, but in fact, we're going to go ahead and make that a variable. So, so angle equal 30 degrees. And so this is going to go from 0, 0 to um, the x value is going to be cosine of angle, y value is going to be sine of angle. This is pretty standard. Uh, and then this is going to be cosine of angle and, of course, negative sine of angle because we are looking at the central point. Okay. Good deal. Let's see if we can get that looking a little bit better. And that's looking pretty good there. I think I said that's 30 degrees. I'm going to probably bump that down to 10 degrees. Let's see what that looks like. That's too much now. See? That's what happens. Um, but actually, we also will need to set the plot range anyway, because um, uh, minus one nine. Because we are going to want, we are going to put other stuff on there. We don't want our plot range to change every time we change what we're looking at. So this is uh, okay, getting better. Now the problem here, of course, is this one. Hmm. So maybe now I could make the degree angles 30 degrees <laughs> and it'll look better. So the whole thing was off but because of the aspect ratio. Okay, for some reason, I mean, this one is exactly as long as this one. So the only thing I'm thinking is maybe we should go out to two to make the graph look more square which is easy to do. And so far we're not doing anything interesting. Uh, I mean, not that we ever will. And then of course the plot range needs to go to uh, 0 to 2 on the x-axis. So this may be a little bit nicer. There we go. Looking pretty good there. And then I'm going to change the angle again at some point. So uh, this is the umbral cone. We're now going to go ahead and put an object, uh, a circle here, uh, that's going to represent our planet. 
Uh, and then we were going to look at, so we know this angle here, and we're going to go ahead and label that in just a second, I hope. Um, and we might not actually need the bottom half of this, but well, we'll keep it for right now. But um, And so we're going to draw a little planet here, uh, and then measure the angle to the, uh, we know the angle to the center of the planet, and we're going to use the radius of the planet to determine whether we're, we're within the umbral cone. So let's go ahead and do that now. So, so far this is going pretty well. I'm fairly happy with this. So let's put our circle here at 1.25.75. For right now, okay, hang on. Ah, uh, so you, you almost, you almost fooled me there. Um, so we're going to say CX, CY, CR, because we want to be able to change these. So the CX is going to be 1.25, 0 0.75, and 0 0.25 for now, but again, we're making it in a way that we can easily, easily change it if we have to. Okay. Let's see what that did. And I might at some point throw in some color here, and I think... Oh, I don't know if... I, I don't know if I can do a transparent color, RGB... Because I really kind of want this to be not um, not in the same, and I don't know if I need to use fill circle fill or something here. So let's see if that's a fill circle. If that doesn't work, I'm gonna actually read the directions. Yeah, it doesn't know what fill circle is. Okay. So 2D graphics. Okay. Okay, so this is called a disk, not a circle, if it's if it's being filled. And the only thing I'm wondering is if I can do translucence, so we can have like a sort of a see-through, because um, that does not look great. Um, it works, but it doesn't look great, and also looks like it's going really close to the center of that planet, which I don't like either. Um, And let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see if I can do alpha. I'm going to look for alpha channel or... Okay, no. Trans... Bear. No. Apparently we cannot do that. So... Let's see how we're going to handle this. Um, I think what we can do is make a circle and then make a dot right in the middle of it. So we can sort of say, um, circle of this, and then uh, disk uh, of like a tiny little disk there. See so what that does. Uh, that looks actually kind of nice. I think I want to move that planet away a little bit that dot's too close to the center. Um, yeah, let's move this a little bit up into the left. So up will be 0.80. To the left, we're going to say 1.15. That's what that does. Okay, that's much better. So here we have the situation where the umbral cone is touching part of the planet, but not the entire planet. Uh, let's start doing some labeling here if we can. I want to label this a theta over here. Um, except not, sorry, not theta, because using Greek letters is really, really cute. But it is not, um, it's really, really cute, but it's very hard to, when you're programming, you can't really transfer those. Sorry, Greek people. So we're probably going to use an American letter like angle A or something. But first, I guess what we want to do is we're going to draw a line from here to here uh, in a different color, which is going to be the angle we're going to try to measure. And then we'll have a little bit of a, a right angle here because we're taking the shortest distance um, from the planet. So let's go ahead and draw that other line in there real quick. And I think we're going to make this line also, we're going to leave it red for right now. We might change that. So it's going to be from zero, 0 to CX. Okay, let's keep this pumping. Gorgeous, and I'm pretty sure now I, I really don't want that uh, that line in red, but that's okay. 
Okay, now we're going to draw a line um, because we're trying to measure the angle between here and the edge. And to do that, we need a perpendicular line from here to the edge of the circle. So it's going to be you know, length r. Um, but the question is, what's its what's its um, what's its uh, point going to be here? What's its what's its terminal point going to be here? And to know that, we need to know. Um, so this is our line at 30 degrees. And I'm almost beginning to wonder if I didn't want to really use degrees here. But um, well the perpendicular angle is going to be 120 degrees. Uh, it's always going to be 90 degrees bigger. It's actually going to be also 90 degrees small. So we're going to call it the per ang, not the perp ang. Ang plus 90 times degrees, which is pi over 2, for those of you who care. And then we're going to we're going to basically uh, go from here, the center, and we're going to go um, plus minus cosine. Well, let's see. Terminal point is going to be terminal point. We're going to start at cx, cy, cr. No, we're not cx, cy plus CR times, and at that angle, it's, I think it's still going to be cosine of perang, sine of perang. That actually, I'm almost sure that's correct. Um, uh, and we're going to draw the line from the center. And that, we're going to use some more colors here in just a minute. CX, CY, to term point, which is already in this works, I will be in Bayes, and I'm going to save this really quickly, too, before I forget. No, I didn't mean to do that. didn't mean to do that, either. Okay, well, that was kind of stupid of me. I can't really do that, either, can I? Um, you see Eclipse portions math. So, mathics? Yes! And I did it exactly the wrong way. Um because yeah if it was on the other side that would have been the correct thing to do um, so we'll just say minus, minus 90 degrees kind of the same thing isn't it okay fantastic so now we have this uh, the way we like it and we are now going to um, I'm tempted just to put some point names in there so we can just say angle OA blah um, and then we need um, Let's see. So the angle, the extra angle I'm measuring here is this tiny angle, which I'm going to make bigger, I think. Um, which makes me wonder if I even needed this. Oh, I did need this perpendicular line because I need it to go to where this intersects this, and that's where it's going to get ugly. Okay. So I don't need this big angle here. That doesn't help me at all. Um, I need this much smaller angle here that tells me how far the center is. Uh, Do I? No, I already have that angle. So what I need to know is... Oh, no, I do need the, the angle between here and here, uh, and the terminal point. Um, and that is going to tell me whether or not... Um, that's going to tell me whether or not we... Um, it hits the... The, 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 tr the angle has to be less than the angle of the, of the cone if portion of the planet is inside the umbra. Say that seven times fast. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw it again. We're still going to go with the red, but we're going to definitely change this here. From the origin to the terminal point. And we might fix up some of these in just a sec here. Above and beyond just renaming, st recoloring stuff. Okay, fantastic. So now, what we need is the terminal point is what did I say the terminal point is? Okay, good. So it is it is a formulistically determined by the uh, center value the center value of the circle, um, and so now we have. Yeah, I'm beginning to wonder now if this is a fantastic idea. Uh, by the way, if if you are considering this in three dimensions, we are in the the plane of that cuts through the center of the sphere. 
um, and that because the because cones are rotationally symmetric, uh, this is sufficient to tell us whether it touches the umbra touches the uh, the uh, planet. Um, so so that should be fine. So now what we need to know here is um, we need this angle here actually, and that angle there we can get from okay if we know the x and y coordinates of this which we do um it's just going to be the arc tangent of opposite over adjacent which is y over x which is it's actually a, there's actually a, a two argument version of arc tan which will do it for us we don't really need that though so our terminal point um has an x and a y which we have over here um so the perpendicular angle, the f the desired angle, is the arc tangent of um, so term point I don't know if they're going to support this notation uh, the f 2 over 1, the second argument over the first argument, and I don't know if they're going to allow me to get away with that it, it's mathemat mathem mathematically, mathematica -cally correct, but they might not like it. Okay, so you'd be fine with that. And so the desired angle here. Um, all right, now let's go ahead and put it in here, where we can actually look at some of the numbers instead of just the figure. So the des angle here is being obnoxious. Oh, because I've got the wrong... Yeah, I now I need to do the... Uh, this thing. Okay, and over here we can say degree is 24 degrees. Um, and we know that the uh, ang1... Uh, oh no, we don't know that actually. Uh, we know that ang is 30 degrees. So in this case we know there's a, there's a connection. However, there's a problem. Uh, obviously, we've done this for these specific values. Now, the question is, can we generalize this without knowing what CX, CY, and, CZ, uh, and CR are in advance? Uh, and I think we can. Uh, that's the goal, anyway. So we're going to comment this sucker out. We can't run it with graphics mode anymore, because obviously uh, it's indeterminate now. Oh, something I didn't like about oh, I didn't like the fact that I was trying to print it. Okay, so here we have YCX. Not sure I like that. Uh, and I'm not sure how the minus square root of 3 gets in there. And I think the minus square root of 3 gets in there for a reason we need to worry about. Term point. Oh yeah, because the perman angle is yeah. So we actually need to. Um, we don't know what the. We, I mean, we'll know what it is, but we won't. We won't have an exact value for it. So let's do this, and let's try this. Gonna get that error message because it's trying to do something weird. Okay. So it looks like. Um, well, we won't. We won't we'll the the computation we're going to make is the radius plus uh, there's going to be a problem here because do we know CX so CX and CY are just sort of things we're using so maybe uh, we we know this R we won't know CX and CY is the problem we will know this angle and we will know this angle and from there, the question is, can we get to this angle, the angle we actually want? This angle. And... Uh, I get, uh, no, we can't really use X and Y here, because this is just an example. And so our givens are, we know CR. We don't know CX and CY. We're pretending this is the origin. Uh, and so we want this angle measured as... Uh, from this angle. So we know two angles. 
Uh, and we know... Yeah, this, this could be interesting here. This, this intersection point might be the, the key here. Uh, we need to know what it is without knowing what it is. And yes, that made sense. Um, okay. The perpendicular angle is the angle minus 30. So we know that. That's fine. Um, the terminal point, we would not know. We would not know what this point is here. We just need to know sort of how much extra... Uh, we might actually be able to pull this off, actually. We, If we can figure out... Um, what this angle here is, because this is a this is a this is a right angle here, um, and this is the sort of extra angle. Um, oh, yeah, we can figure out the angle. This is an isosceles triangle, or is it? It's a right triangle. Um. I think it's an isosceles triangle. Uh, but it actually probably doesn't even matter because we can figure out... Oh, actually, it does have to be an isosceles triangle for us to... Uh, okay, so let's take a, the... So let's take the norm of the term point. CR signing... Um, let's see if we can simplify that a little bit. Yeah. I think the problem here is we don't really need the absolute values. And I, I'm almost sure that if you put this all together, they would... Uh, uh, the, the norm of the, um, of the center of the, you know, of, of CX, CY is obviously this. Uh, and I think those two things are the same. And I don't know if full simplify is something this thing supports. Nope, it doesn't simplify. So let's see. So one length says it's going to be CX plus. So it's going to be the uh, yeah. That's that's pretty obvious. The other length. Square root, absolute, blah, 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 blah. Um, there's, there should be an obvious way to see why this thing is, um, is isosceles. Although I, I'm slightly worried that it's going to turn out it's not isosceles, and I'm going to feel stupid. Um, actually, it might not be isosceles. Um, okay. In fact, I might be able to make it so that this is definitely a right angle here. So we might be able to just use that to um, to get because this is a right angle because we've, we've created it to be one. Um, and we don't know any three of the three distances on this triangle. Um, which we need to know at least two of them to get this. Um, so I think, I think, I think, I think. Um, I'm, I'm doing something wrong here, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but one thing I don't like is the fact that this is looking like it's uh, isosceles, and I don't think it has to be. So let's actually move it, like, yank it way to the left temporarily and uncomment this stuff here. And I think next I'm going to use... Okay, so let's move it like way to the left and see if that gives us a very good I indication that it's not an isosceles triangle. Um, yeah, so now it looks like... And in fact, it's missing now, but it's clearly not an isosceles triangle. Um, so now we should probably like um, talk about our givens. Our givens are this angle here, and I'm wondering if th it has the arc command. I can actually draw that. Uh, and we also know the angle between here, the conal center, and the um, and the and the this big angle here. Um, so 
So, and of course, R will determine, CR will determine whether or not there's a, there's, and in this case, we're getting a very near miss, actually, of the umbra. The penumbra would hit it, but it turns out we're not interested in the penumbra at this time. Okay, uh, let's see how we can deal with this. Um, yeah, we could drop a perpendicular here because we do know this angle. Um, but I don't think that helps at all. Mm, we know this angle. So we know this angle. Um, yeah, I think we need to do some angle chasing here. And to do that, let's see if there's an arc. We're going to have to start marking stuff up a little bit. I was kind of hoping not to, but uh, it's, it's going to be circle. And I think circle can actually take yes, no. Um, I was hoping we'd get an arc going. Um, oh, we can get arrows going. That's actually really nice. Um... Let's see what, what else. There, there should be like an arc. In, in Mathematica, you can use the circle directive to create just an arc of a circle. Um, wow, that's actually pretty nice. So th they're pretty good about this stuff here. Um, wow, arc doesn't appear anywhere in here. Circle circle um that looks really good um so the angle path I guess you could um yeah they have something called just a path in here somewhere we're sure the point from but the turtle starting at an angle that zero degrees going through um the turns given by angles uh Oh, I've got to see what that does. I don't even care if it works. Um, so, Angle Path. Reminds me of Angle Dance, which was a song on Square One TV. Turtle starting at zero, zero, and angle to zero, going through the turns given by these angles. So, uh, let's go give you a 45 degree turn, 20 degree turn, and a 30 degree turn. I don't even know what the hell this is going to do. I, I'm just, I just have to see it. Well. That's not fun. So wait, how do we get angle path? To, how do we get angle path to do something? Unless it doesn't really work. Um, oh, angle path actually returns. Um... Okay, so it returns a line, and I think we can probably deal with that. Um, uh, you know what, I'm going to be obnoxious. I want to see the graphics primitives. Come on. Okay. Okay, so I think 2D graphics begins up here. They don't call it that, of course, but... Um, graphics! Here we are. Circle, disk, rectangle, polygon, line, and text. Um... Oh, it's, it's nice that they don't actually mention path, even though you can do it. Um, I guess path actually creates a creates a uh, a line ultimately. Um, we don't have arc here, so that's going to be a slight issue for drawing. Let me fix that. I should actually be able to just do this. That's that's an interesting looking thing. Um, 
so I probably can't draw like a uh, uh, a little arc here and it could well actually it could because Jesus Christ um I could use a bunch of points. I think I don't know if points are primitive, but it should be. Circle disc flying on line. And I mean you could draw a very, very small line, you know, a little a whole hundred lines that basically form create an angle. Um which is what I think I'll do. So uh so line circle is going to be Oh, I guess you can actually give more than two points to a line, so this actually is not as bad as I thought it's going to be. So it's going to be table um, cosine x, we'll say x times degrees, sine, and we're going to say not x, but t times degrees. And we'll have um, t, just for the test, run from 1 to 30 degrees. And this should create a nice little 30 degree angle for us. Uh, we are going to get rid of this because we don't need it, and it's just kind of stupid, although I, I'm wondering if we could actually get it to do what we need. I'm, I'm just sort of curious. But we will say line, line, circle. And let's see what that does. A ghetto, ghetto usage. Iterator does not have appropriate bounds. You're right, it doesn't. Because we need it to go in degrees, otherwise it'll just jump. 30 degrees is less than 1. Okay, now I'm unhappy. Um, okay, well now I'm going to have to look at this see what's going on here. Line circle. Let's see if I can do an N on that. No, I cannot. Okay, well. Let's quickly see if I can do simple tables. Yes. Uh, oh, 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 oh. I'm an idiot, that's why. This, of course, should be um, one degree. No. Oh, no. Because I have my degrees in there. Double moron! Yes, it does. Ooh, that that does not make it happy. Um, well, let's take a look over here. Mm, probably shouldn't take this long to load. Okay. Line circle's not that big. Oh. Okay. I should be able to say line to this. And I should be able to put that inside of graphics. I can't look at them, of course, because, you know, that would be asking too much. Um, okay, so what are we doing here? I think maybe I just need to put an N in front of this because it doesn't like keeping things in symbolic format if it's going to draw them um, and I need a comma here that might be a really big problem that might have been the actual problem and that's a sort of a fun that is nice looking that is a nice looking little angle there so we can do that so we can actually draw a an angle by going in one degree line steps I'm going to generalize that in just a second also, that radius is too big. We need we need a smaller radius. Uh, we don't want it to be this big. We want it to be like over here. And I'm beginning to think we really don't need the lower half of this at all. It looks like we're just uh, just wasting time with this line because we are looking at just one side. And I'm pretty sure if with this if you did have this lower line, you could flip it because it's rotational symmetry. Uh, let me go ahead and save what we're doing here. Again, you can't see this, but I am. Um, and then we're, we'll we'll go, we'll continue by getting rid of that, zooming in a little bit. And, uh, K. 
Okay, upward, there we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and access true plot range from here to here. Um, I think we can even change the, the size at which the graphics are printed, but don't quote me on that. And well, that really did not improve things. Uh, let me go ahead and get the other line there real quick. Um, we don't need that one anymore. Okay, let's see if this makes it look any better. Yeah, I'm not... I think the problem is because we're not going wide enough, it's it's cutting off the axes. Uh, so let's go ahead and say plot range minus 0.5 or something. That might be going too far in the other direction, though. Yeah. Um... I think it's just minus 0.1 will do. And that should be close enough. I don't want to, of course, dilly-dally with it all the time. It's not looking too bad. Okay, so let's go ahead and make this angle marker a lot smaller. Um, this is our known angle. This is this line's known, and this line's known. So we need to say... And so that means this... Um, oh... Yeah, these two lines are way too close for this to be a good example. So let me change this around a little bit. I'm going to move it down a bit to... Maybe move it down a lot. Let's see what that does. Um, yeah. So we know this angle and we know this bigger red angle. And at this point, I think we need to maybe start putting our angles in... Uh, we need to label them and we need to start putting colors on them that are different because we are now um, we're now looking at different things. Okay, so we know this angle, we know that. Um, we know the distance to this point. We know this angle, so we actually know where... that doesn't help us any. We know where this point is, but we already know where this point is. Um, okay, so let's go ahead, let me go ahead and make a general draw angle function. Um, which will take a radius. Um, I'm not going to have it take an X and Y. Set equal to... and cosine... Uh, R time, okay, R times cosine T degrees, where T goes from 1 to angle. And then over here, I should just be able to say line, draw angle, ang, I'm um, sorry, point 0.2, ang. This is probably not going to work. Yeah. Um... Partly because I think I forgot to add a break. No? Okay. Okay, so hang on. R times this thing here. T goes from 1 to angle. So let's take a look at it over here. A quick like. Oh, I think I know what I did wrong here, actually. <laughs> okay. Uh, so from one, so here. Oh no, this isn't degrees. So here, I think we're gonna have to assume the the angle is given in radians, and so go from one times degree to actually she goes from zero to ang in steps of one degree. That's much better. Um. Or worse, we don't know. Doesn't like it. Iterator does not have appropriate bounds. N one. 
Oh wow, it doesn't recognize that as a as a multiply. Um So it's gonna have to be like this. Uh, that should work. Or that should not work. Those are the two two options. Um and I actually think I can just reload this without having to do without having to stop and restart it every time. Um draw angle, radius of zero point two and twenty degrees. T zero N. Uh the only thing I'm thinking of is maybe so this should work, but this might not. No, that works too. Um, so table, did I, did I not use the, yep, I did not use the uh, correct variable here. Because A is the one up here. And it's a bound, it, it's complicated. So let's see if this dot works. And I'm just going to see if I can do this now. Uh, there's a reasonable chance this won't work because it's going to interfere with what I already, ha already have defined. Or it's going to just hate me. Now at least I can do this. When in doubt, fuck yourself. So that works. Um, oh my fucking god. Do I need to put an N in front of this because it doesn't know how to... Apparently, yes. So apparently it will not do an N automatically on the things you give it. Which, by the way, Mathematica does, and I just realized I don't need a 1 in front of my degree. Um, so another reason is that Mathix sucks. Seriously? And for some reason it doesn't actually like my graphics command, even though it, it should. Uh, there. I'm going to do that. Okay, awesome. So that's our little angle there. Um, and then we know the angles of the big one, too, so I think we can put that in there. And... And those are two known, and R is known, so we need to label that here in a sec. Um, and it's QR because we're actually using the the Q R Q X Q Y as our little labels here. But okay, um, so let's go ahead and make this triangle a little bit. I'm not sure this line adds anything for us here. Um, well, it does, but it's the angle we're trying to find, but that's it should be in a different color. Okay, so let's go ahead and make this angle blue. Let's make that line blue and then get an angle on top of it. Um, terminating point, so we're going to have a line from 0, 0 to the center, which we are going to call... I think we're going to make that one blue. And we'll have a line from CX away to the term. That and that I think we're going to call red, blue, and well, we almost have to use green, don't we? I mean, there's really, there's really no point there. Um, well, I'm almost sure this is going to be the wrong colors because I'm missing something, but let's see what happens. Um, okay, great. So now we can do a blue angle. And um, this here should be a different color. Uh, and I think we're going to make it purple. I don't know why, but I just, I just like purple. 
Um, so this is going to be green, this is going to be purple. If it understands purple, if it doesn't, we'll use magenta. If it doesn't, that we'll just use RGB colors. Solid. Okay, good. Now we know what we're doing here. So we know the black angle, and we know the blue angle. I'm going to draw the blue angle in in just a second. Um, and what we're trying to find out is the is the green angle um, based on those two values. And we know, um, and we think we can get it from those two values, and we should be able to do it actually. So all right, so let's go ahead and do the blue angle. Um, and that's going to be line circle. No, it's not. It's going to be desired. Nope, it's not going to be that. Draw angle. And I think I'm going to make this a 0.3. And the angle here is going to be the um, arc tangent of CY over CX. Because that's what it is. And I keep forgetting I actually probably need to put a line in front of this, don't I? That does. Ah, uh, syntactical error. And unfortunately, I don't even think I can do my, um... three. Yeah, I think this is, there's just a syntax error here. Let's see what it is. Um... So I'm, I'm missing, I'm, I'm not closing off something properly here, so close that off. Oh, well, it's unhappy. Okay, so the thing I didn't draw, uh, draw up here was uh, line. All right, because I'm closing out arc tan, draw angle, and line. Let's do this. And that's gorgeous. Now, the only thing I'm, I'm seeing here, and I wonder if you guys are seeing it too, is black and blue look really similar to me. Um, and I'm not happy about that. So, well, white, green, yellow, orange, maybe? No, it's yellow, green, blue. I'm running out of the Roy G. Biff colors. Um, I really don't want to make this yellow because it's the background is it's going to look really bad in this background. Um, I could increase the line thickness maybe, um, but anyway, okay. So we know these two angles. Um, so we also know this distance here, and I'm wondering if we can use a double-headed arrow there instead. You know this distance. We don't know this distance, uh, and we well we could get it by the Pythagorean theorem, or just using angles. Um, and I still do not like where I have put this. I think it maybe needs to go a bit to the east, quote unquote east. So it's at point ninety-five. I'm trying to get sort of the lines don't intersect each other constantly, which is ugly. Um, okay, good. We know those two angles. We know R. We know that distance. I suspect we're doing something really stupid here. Um, because the angle we're trying to find is this little tiny angle here. Um, or, or the angle from here all the way to the, all the way to the, um, to the green line. Yeah, so we're trying to find either this angle here, which should not be a huge deal, right? It's going to be, um... These two lines have to be perpendicular. No, they don't. Um... Because if these two lines were... If this and this line were perpendicular, uh, then these two lines have to be parallel, and they're not. So let's see if there's a way we can make that really obvious. Uh, probably just by moving it to the left a lot. Just, you know, whatever. I'm trying to find the most general figure here, which is difficult. Um, okay, so this is the near-miss case, which might be okay. 
So these lines are definitely not perpendicular to each other. Okay, um, we've been going for about 50 minutes. Uh, probably do another 10 and then we're going to break it for today, making it today maybe the most wasted day of my freaking life. Just kidding. Every day is a bigger waste than the previous one. Very happy about that. Okay, so we, do, we don't know that it's perpendicular to this. We do know it's perpendicular to this line. Um, so we do know what... Um, we do know what the flat angle here is. Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, do we know that? Um, we should know that. Yeah, we should know the angle from going up here. This angle here, even though we're not really... Uh, the angle made from the x-axis. So... See if there's anyone here, because I'm pretty sure this is a really simple problem, and I'm just uh, I'm just spacing it. Uh, let's see. And we want the angle between this. In fact, we should probably go ahead and draw that angle in, even if we're not going to. Um, I don't know if green's the best color, but we can change that in bulk later. Um, so that's the angle. the green angle is one we want. Yeah, let's see if we can um, draw that angle. But before I forget, I'm going to go ahead and back this up real quick because it is kind of working. Okay, get it fine. Okay, and so the angle there will be turn point. So da 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 green, we're not necessarily going to use it, but the line of draw angle, let's go ahead and put this out at 0.4, and the angle is going to be the arc tangent of, um, yeah, I think turn point, oh, the, the desired angle. It's going to exactly be the desired angle. Um, And I still need a, a starting point, don't I? So starting, not really starting at zero, zero, but kind of starting at zero, zero. And let's see what that does. That I think is going to give me a syntax error. Because I messed something up. Told ya. And I think what I messed up here was no. Line that goes from zero zero uh new no 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 that's not how we do that. Uh there. Da -da -da -da. Isn't that brilliant? Why is there a comma with a no I think I just have not uh, there, I don't have a comma hanging out that I don't really need. Okay. Ta da the angles we know, the angle we want. Um, we can call this D and this R, because we do know those, uh, or QR if we want to be like precise. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, this, this should be a very easy problem. But also, it's time for Uncle Bucky to go. And when Uncle Bucky goes, I go. Okay, thank you for watching the stream. We will pick this up later. I appreciate you're watching me or not watching me.